Hey everyone, it's Hannah here at Coldesi, and in this video, I'm gonna be going through all of the different backings that you can use for embroidery. Sometimes backing is referred to as stabilizer as well. So we're gonna go through our basic types, the ones that we use the most often, but then we'll also go through some specialty backings. First, we'll go over the most common and basically our go-to backings, which are cutaway and tearaway. So both of these cutaway and tearaway backings do come in different ounces. And what you're gonna use is gonna depend on how much stabilization your item needs. First, let's go through what you would use cutaway backing for. So right here, I have both my white and my black cutaway backing. And basically, like the name implies, when you're done embroidering with the cutaway backing, you will cut the excess material away from your design. Cutaway backing is really great for sewing on your more thin materials like polyester polos or really any kind of athletic wear. For my tearaway backing, you'll see that I have a couple different sizes here. I have my cap tearaway backing, and basically this is the perfect size to put inside of a hat. And then I also have my pre-cut squares of tearaway. Now a great way to know that it's tearaway backing is that like you see here, when you're done with your embroidery, all you have to do is tear away the extra material. We use tearaway backing most often with thicker materials or any material that doesn't have a lot of stretch to it. Tearaway backing is also really great if you're sewing on a fabric that you'll see the opposite side of. So tearaway backing is really great for something like beach towels or hand towels. Next, let's talk about some of our specialty backings that you'll use for some more specific applications. First, we'll talk about our fusible mesh backing. Now I'll take it out of the bag here so that we can get a good look at it. And really, this is a very thin material. It has absolutely no stretch to it. So as you can see, I can't move this around, but what we like to use this for is adding it to materials that are super stretchy. So we'll iron this on, it'll help our embroidery to stay nice and tight together. One useful feature of this backing is that it does not show through. So I have an example here of a garment that we really should have used the fusible mesh backing for. So we actually went ahead and used a cutaway backing for this. And if you can see, you can see the backing through this material. And it's also a really stretchy material. So it could have been nice to have this to help secure the stretch. So I'll show you guys how this works here. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this away. And if you need more, if this isn't enough to stabilize what you're sewing on, you can always double this up and use two pieces. But as you can see, I can put it behind my material and you literally cannot see this back there at all. Next, we'll be talking about peel and stick backing. Now, a lot of embroiderers really love to use this for fast frames, but one of my favorite applications for using the peel and stick is when I'm embroidering on flexible or moisture wicking style hats like this, and when I use the jerky cap frame. So let me show you how this works. So first, you'll tear a piece of your peel and stick backing. Then I'll remove this back sheet, revealing the adhesive coating. I'll flip the cap frame over. And I'm literally going to just stick this right on top like this. So it's, it's really kind of just like a sticker. I can then flip my cap frame back over. I'll grab my hat here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the bill of my cap inside this area, making sure that it's nice and tight. You want to make sure that your hat is really nice and secure when embroidering on it. We'll get that in there. Then I can get my hat and I can stick it to the backing. So you'll just wanna work at it and make sure it's really nice and stuck down there. Remove any wrinkles. And then you can sew on it just like this. You can put this on your embroidery machine and you're ready to go. It's also really great for hard to hoop items like collars and cuffs. You don't have to worry about a big piece of backing. You can just go ahead and tear the size that you need. And if you wanted to embroider like a monogram on a cuff or something, you can just easily do that with this little peel and stick. Now we're gonna be talking about the wash away backing. Now this is also a tear away style backing. As you can see, I can just tear it away, but it is different than our normal tear away backing. So on this tote bag here, we use tear away backing. And as you can see on the inside of our bag at our design, we tore away most of the backing, but we still have a little piece here. If I were to throw this in the wash, these pieces aren't gonna quite wash away. 
But with the wash away tear away backing, I'll give you a little bit of a demonstration here. This is just some warm water. But if I tear a piece and I dip it in there for a little bit, it really starts to dissolve. Now, if I were to put this in the washer, it would definitely just disintegrate and go away. Next, we'll be talking about backings that you've put on post embroidery. So I have heat seal and I also have cover up. So heat seal is something that you use when making patches. After your patch is done sewing out, you'll apply some of this heat seal material. You'll cut out a piece that's the size you need and you'll just heat press it onto the back of your patch for a couple seconds. Then you cut out your patch and your patch can then be heat applied to any garment that you'd like. The heat seal will work as the adhesive that applies your patch to the fabric. Now the other thing that heat seal backing does for patches is it fuses all the loose ends of your thread. Cover up is another heat applied backing and what it does is it completely covers up the back of your embroidery and it can help with the itch that can sometimes happen when embroidery is on skin. A lot of people love to use this after embroidering on baby or toddler clothing, but we've also seen people buy this that have purchased something that was embroidered from a store like Target or Walmart and they will heat apply this on to help with that irritation. The more textured side is going to be the glue side, but then the other side that'll be touching the skin is really nice and soft. So if you have any questions on any of the backings that we talked about in this video, go ahead and visit colemanandcompany.com and you can live chat with one of our embroidery supply specialists.